I'm not going to go into too much detail about the design guideline. I will not go into technical detail, as you will all have the opportunity to read in detail the design guideline manual while you will answer to the uh, tenders for design. Uh, so I'm just going to give you some clue how to uh, understand the design guideline manuals and how to apprehend it. Uh, so for today's presentation, uh, what I'm going to present to you is first what was the scope of work for the design guideline, why did, why did we need a uh, design guideline, then I'm going to give you the different terms of the design guideline, the key chapters, and the key parameters which are included in the design guideline. That's just one slide to give you a very uh, short overview, and then a few cross-sections which are included in the design guideline. Um, so, first question is, why did we need a design guideline? Uh, as you notice, Rail Baltica is in free country. That's an operation which is um, uh, quite uncommon, because we are going to have mixed traffic, we are going to have high speed, and it's not um, a typical case that you can find in the, uh, in the books. So, uh, there is a need to prepare uh, design criteria that will be applied for all the tenders. You also notice that there are going to be a lot of tenders, and if there is not um, one uh, standard to be uh, followed by everyone, how it's going to work at the end. Uh, so that's why the design guideline is required. And then uh, we have the t you can say that we have the TSI, which are defining some criteria, but actually TSI is, are not defining all the criteria. Some points are let, off, are let open. Uh, for some points, you have to cho choose between se different values, uh, considering your case. So uh, for first case, uh, on which we, the value uh, is defined for Rail Baltica project, we have indicated it in the design guideline to avoid any misunderstanding. Also, you have the EN norms, which are defining a lot of things, but some points can be missing in the EN norms compared to uh, mixed traffic, compared to high speed. And you have also the UIC uh, recommendation. So all that is providing um, a background for the design guideline, and we put together in the terms all the recommendations, what has to be chosen, what has not to be considered, and to be in order to be applied by everyone. Um, the key objective for the design guideline was to consider that we have a long term. Um, uh, you have to consider the railway long-term vision. You, you are not building an infrastructure for the next five years. You are building an infrastructure for 100 years. So that's very important to have a long-term vision and to understand what are the possible evolution of the market and consider it if it's not an additional cost. Uh, we have as well uh, the idea of a competition neutral um, in the tenders because that's very important. We uh, for the system especially, we, uh, we cannot choose a solution because that's an open competition. And everyone uh, can propose its solution, of course, if it answers the requirements. Um, and then we have the integration of the European best practice. There is already in Europe some uh, mixed traffic line on which uh, there is some feedback, and that's very important to consider in the design guideline the feedback and the best practices from other countries. Uh, how did we proceed for the design guideline? We proceeded in two, three steps. So the first step was more an overview, a general overview of the situation. What is the background in the free country for the legislation for railway? What is the Rail Baltica national studies that were already performed? And what is uh, the best practice that we have in Europe? For the best practice, we have selected two cases. Um, one case is Lion Torino, which is a binational line, and another case is a line in Germany, which is a mixed traffic as well. Okay. Uh, know the different terms of the design guideline. You may think that's a lot, but uh, that's actually a lot. Um, to start with, we have the change management procedure. So, uh, first point is we are defining design guideline. That's we can have some evolution in the norms, we can have some changes. So the first point is to identify how this uh, design guideline can evaluate in the future if required. And we have the derogation, which may be required for some portion of the line because we have very specific conditions. We have as well the uh, clarif clarification and um, correction if required. Um, a key 
terms is a general requirement, which is really setting out uh, what are the key requirements that shall be applied for every, everything. So we have the general parameter, which is uh, very general, but also very necessary. And uh, we have uh, to, to have ver um, um, a background for everyone and to have the same basis for everyone. Uh, we have the access requirements, sa safety and security requirements. We have, for the system, there is, um, you can choose different conditions for the environmental condition. So we have set out the environmental conditions to be considered for the systems. And con corrosion, exposure class. We have um, anti-penetration device when a road is close to the high speed line. How do we uh, do that? Uh, cable docks requirement and the design life for the infrastructure and for the systems. We have the railway alignment. For the railway alignment, we have two parts. One part is a mixed traffic, which is the main part of the corridor. And we have another part which is going to be applied close to the major cities, which is for the um, passenger and light freight trains. Um, if we separate these two cases, it's because the condition for passenger and light freight can be, um, can be a little bit better and more, uh, and more favorable. So this is why. Uh, we have one term for tracks. For the substructure, we have three terms. One is for the earthwork and the embankment. We have one term for the hydraulic and drainage. And we have one term for the structures and tunnels. Um, and we have prepare cross-section, 48 in total, and this cross-section is already a very good basis for all the design tender, tenders, that, um, for, for all the detailed design. <clears throat> so we have defined the embankment, main line, cutting, the crossing loop, the passing loop, and the station. We have defined as well the specific cross-section, such as when uh, there is acoustic needs, when there is hydraulic needs, such uh, technical blocks for the bridges, uh, anti-penetration device for highway. And the, in, in some cases, when the access road is too far away from the high speed line, uh, a maintenance road can be uh, planned close to the high speed line. And then in such case, we have proposed a cross-section how to deal with that. Uh, and we have cross-sections for the structures, which are viaduct, overpass, and tunnel. Uh, all that, as I already said, is based on the EN and UIC recommendation and the best practice. Uh, we have another part. Uh, we have uh, additional terms, which are one term for energy, where we are defining the traction, where we are defining the catenary, the non-traction, and the EMC. Uh, we have defined as well control command, telecommunications, CADA, the infrastructure facilities. That's just um, some uh, typical sketch for the infrastructure facilities in the station, in the passing loop, and in the crossover. Uh, station and passenger platforms, the environment, and the M uh, MEP and tunnel. And uh, we have four additional terms, which uh, were not prepared by Sistra, but prepared by Airby Rail, which are adaptation cl to climate change, beam requirements, architecture and landscaping, and ramps. What is very important for uh, CCS and energy system is that we have, not, uh, we have defined the key requirements to be achieved by the system and the key interfaces with the civil work. As I said already, no solution for the systems. Um, okay, for the key parameter included in the design guideline manual, um, the type of line that we are gonna, the tra type of traffic that we are gonna have is passenger P1, P2, and uh, freight F1. Um, the gauge to be used is GC. The uh, axle load uh, is 25 ton per axle which is a bit more than the uh, TSI requirement, but it's, as I already said, long-term vision and uh, to consider what can be the evolution of the railway. And for the train length, that's uh, maybe a bit complicated uh, uh, looking at it like that, but it's um, for the um, infrastructure, we are building for passenger uh, trains 400 meters, 
and the platform is only 200 meters, meaning that if we have short train at the beginning of the services, then uh, if longer trains are required later, it's a very small investment compared to changing the track, uh, ally to ch to changing the track and systems. Um, for the, um, I, I just introduced a few parameters. There is really plenty of parameters in the design guideline, so, um, but it's just to give you some basis. Uh, there is no level crossing, no gauge crossing with uh, the uh, existing railway system, 1520. Um, there is required access for maintenance every two or three kilometers and in specific location. The Type, uh, the, ball, uh, the track is ballasted track. The distance between uh, track center is 4.5 meters in the main line, and it's 3.8 in the uh, close to the city, where the traffic is lower than 200 kilometers. Uh, maintenance working path, 0.8 maintenance path, and it's um, at 3 meters from the track center. The energy system is 2 times 25 kV. Uh, for the ERTMS, it's ERTMS level 2, baseline 3, which is chosen. And we have defined as well the vertical clearance for the road bridges and the, and the tunnel. Uh, so now I'm presenting you some typical cross section which are included in the design guideline. So uh, in this cross section, which is the, mo the most typical one uh, on embankment, uh, you may see that there is a distance between the track center, which is identified. You have the catenary position walkway position, the ballast and sub-ballast thickness, and also um, it's defined in the design guideline itself, the frost penetration system, which, is, which has impact on the subgrade system thickness. Uh, there is another one in cutting. It's just to give you that, um, some example, so you have an idea of what was done. And we have considered for the cutting two different cases for the, hydro, uh, for the drainage considering the right-of-way. And that's a typical section for the uh, overpass. And it's a road bridge, which is on top of the, uh, on the high speed line. And in that case, what is very important is the safety device that are required on the road compared to the existing road that you may uh, already have in the free country. So uh, central arrangement is a typical arrangement that you uh, that you have in the, uh, in the free country. And on each side, we have proposed uh, uh, some um, safety device. And um, thank you very much for your attention.